previous videos of this new user training set, we have reviewed different methods and tools that are available to you to help you complete your material takeoff. In this final video, we'll review just a few of the many more tools that are available to you to help you be effective in estimating your projects. To start, let's consider the ability to just count items on the plan. For example, let's come over to the foundation plan and we'll notice in this particular project that there are some straps at the front of the garage that are called out. To estimate these materials, we can make use of the count tool. We'll click it and just mark the spot on the page where there's one of these particular items. Following the same methodology as we have before, first we'll set the application, in this case hold downs, and then we'll set the product. Click into the more products, search for the particular product we're looking for, select it, and click OK. And then we can right click on the item and choose to draw more counts like this and simply click the locations of anywhere where we need to call that specific product. Another common need is to be able to collect the total linear footage of a particular type of material. A great example of this would be the mud sill that might be around the crawl space of a foundation plan. We could use the segment tool to collect this lineal footage as we have previously for other applications. Or in this case, we could also leverage the linear tool, which allows us to draw just a continuous line. In this case, we don't have to draw individual lines. We can just click from one point to the next to collect the total linear footage as we move around the building. As we finish it, again, we'll follow that same methodology of setting the application. In this case, this will be mud sill. So we'll find that in the application list. And then we'll move on to assigning the product. In this case, we'll choose the default two by six dug for number two treated. At this point, our estimate for the mud sill is complete, but we may want to also collect the same lineal footage to call our sill seal. Rather than draw an additional line on the page, I can right click on the mud sill in the takeoff items list and choose create child of this takeoff item. Notice that an inset line appears below the mud sill. I can use this child item to call sill seal. I'll right click on it and I'll set the application to the sill seal application. And then I'll pick the product. In this case, I'll pick six inch by 50 foot sill seal. Click OK. And now by using the one line that I've drawn in the digitizer, it affects both the mud sill and the sill seal. And any changes that I make to the length of that item affect both items in the material list. Another feature that can be leveraged in relationship to the linear line is the ability to add an on center spacing count of items along the length of the line. For example, let's say that on this mud sill, I wanted to add bearing plates at 32 inches on center. To do that, I can right click on the linear line and in the menu that pops up, I can change the count spacing from none, which is the default, and set it instead to 32 inches. And now along that line of mud sill, a count will be placed every 32 inches. Over in the takeoff items list, I can find this count that has appeared, change its application to miscellaneous connector, and set its product to be BP58. And now we have bearing plates that have been called at 32 inches on center along the length of this mud sill. And as we lengthen or shorten this line, additional counts will be added or removed in relationship to that 32 inch on center spacing. Another common need is to collect the square footage from a particular area in the plan and turn that into a set of materials. In this case, we've come to the roof plan and we're going to trace around the square footage of the upper roof. We click the area tool and we click from corner to corner. We could follow the same example for other applications like siding if we were working on the elevations page or floor decking as we've done previously in the videos. We trace the area and we'll set the application to roof decking. We could choose the generic roof decking and just get the roof decking for the project. Or in this case, another option is to choose the kit that we have set up, the roof 
decking kit for whole house. As a result, we'll get additional materials, which we'll see in a moment. We'll go to the product for this roof decking, set it to be half inch CDX. A final adjustment we'll make is to set the pitch of this container to six, since this is a 612 roof, and notice in the takeoff items list that the square footage is adjusted accordingly. In the takeoff items list, we can see that our half inch roof decking has been linked to the roof pack and our material list will reflect that accordingly. However, since we are making use of the roof decking whole house kit, as was noted earlier, we are getting additional materials because we have set the kit up that way. If we come to the list tab, come to the roof pack, here we'll see in the roof that the top line item is roof decking, the half inch CDX that we had previously called. But notice that in addition, we are also getting the H clips, the underlayment, and the shingles for the project based on the parent item of roof decking. The kits feature is something that you can configure and explore further in the profile kits tab area. And there are additional videos to help you with accomplishing your specific estimating needs. Finally, it's worth noting that you can add material directly into the materials list without having to actually draw it. For example, if we needed some finished framing material for a project, here we can just call the product as 2x4 dug for number 2 and then enter how much we need, in this case 500 lineal feet. And at this point, the material will be in our material list and will ship out with the project. And there was no need to actually draw the material in the digitizer. So as you complete your material estimates, be sure to make use of these and other tools that are available in the software to make your material estimating more accurate, efficient, and effective. Thank you.